Today we are out here filming all on Panasonic cameras. Look at this. It's gonna be a fun shoot today. So the big thing that we're doing is we're profiling a lot of the different cameras and sensors because we want to have a great matching set of looks between each camera. Reflections coming from the ground. I never want to have the light reflecting into it. Feeling your pickleball muscles look so good. <laughs> And one thing we've noticed whenever we started building some of these base LUTs or these conversion LUTs is that the classic Color Space Transform and DaVinci Resolve does not take into account the different sensors. We want to make sure that no matter which camera that you're filming on, we have the proper conversion so that you're getting the same color as you saw it in real life on each sensor. One more time on the count of three. You have the GH5, which is Vlog L. The Lumix S1 doesn't look the same as the Lumix S5 II or S5 IIx. Even filming on the GH7 has different clipping points and you can also film on RE Log C now. And then the GH6 is different when you have dynamic boost on or off. So there's a lot of different variances. So come with us. We're gonna go ahead and dial in all the different cameras. We're gonna shoot some charts and showcase how everything matches perfectly. So we're gonna match from V-Log to also send like D2. So sometimes there's uh, higher frame rates that you wanna film at, but you have to film an 8-bit on some of the cameras. So another profile is send like D2 or send like D that we recommend filming. We've also profiled that. So it also matches as close as possible with the limited dynamic range as compared to V-Log, but it should match your footage much better too if you need that. So on the GH7, the native ISO or the base ISO is 500 instead of 640, which is on the S-series cameras. These micro four thirds sensors are so tiny compared to the full frame. We're gonna be using the GH6 now. All right, so with the GH6, there's also an extra setting called dynamic range boost on and off. I have it set to a quick key here, so I can immediately turn it on and off really quickly. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow more information in the highlights to be retained when the boost mode is on. So you won't notice it unless you're filming bright scenes or there's a lot of highlight information. It will start clipping a lot earlier whenever the, the mode is off, but you'll film at 250 ISO, which is the base ISO for V-Log. Now, whenever you film in the higher uh, circuit, which is gonna be 2000 ISO with the dynamic range boost mode on, you're gonna have a lot more detail or more dynamic range in the highlights. So I recommend filming with dynamic range boost mode on, but just have an ND because it's gonna crank that ISO to 2000, but you're gonna have a lot more data to work with. So that's one thing interesting about the GH6 that you need to take into consideration. All right, so on the S1, it is a little bit different than the S5 II sensor. So the S1H, the S1, the S5, the V-Log all kind of matches across all those cameras. We noticed that when the S5 II, which had a different sensor come out for the autofocus feature, uh, that one and the X2 have slightly more saturated reds. They're a little bit different. The oranges are a little bit different. So it's we're gonna make sure that we're profiling each sensor because you're gonna get different results depending on which camera you're using. And it's also got dual native ISO at 640 and 4000. The noise floor looks almost identical and all the colors are still the same. So in this shot, we're gonna be filming at 4000 ISO just to get a little bit brighter and test out that higher circuit. So we are filming Red Komodo, Red Log 3G10, GH6 V-Log Dynamic Boost on. Let's see what we can get. And that's a wrap on Panasonic cameras. So let us know which camera we should profile next and we'll see you in the next video. Zebras should be, <laughs> there should be no zebras. Cows. It's not a zoo. No, nope. yeah. it's not a zoo. <laughs>